In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can build a simple API using Laravel and the new pipelines facade that was just introduced into Laravel Core just this past week. So to give you some backstory, I've already created a user database that has a thousand records. And in this example, I'm going to show you how we can filter by name, email, and date of birth. Now, so we're going to switch over to Laravel's documentation. And what we're going to do is that we're going to copy this. But note, I'm going to have to clean this up a little bit. I don't like how this current documentation is written because it doesn't really show you how to manipulate the data. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to my user search controller, which is already uh, set up in my API routes file. And we're going to paste this. And this is where we got to start cleaning things up. So we're going to import the facade. We're going to see to it that we pass in our user model. But note, we're going to be passing the eloquent query builder. So that way we can build this API. For now, I'm going to take these references out. I don't want to use then. I actually want to use then return. And then we want to return paginate. So this would be the same as if you had executed, you know, user paginate. I mean, it's literally going to give you the same sort of return. And we haven't really done anything or passed any data. So if we go here and we hit refresh, we should have data. And we do. So it's a good start. Now, we're going to start by using closures. But in the end, we're going to ex uh, extract those out into their own dedicated class. And how about in order just to make this a little bit cleaner, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up creating a pipelines array that is. And that way we can kind of do this cleanly. So the first parm that you have to put into your closure is essentially the payload that you're sending through. Well, as you see on line 20, we're passing Eloquence Query Builder. So I'm just going to type in this with the word builder, except for the word eloquent down here. And then the second parm has to be a closure object that we'll call next. And the way this will work is that the closure that we've created will return this next closure that will then proceed to pass the builder reference through it. If we refresh, we should still have every all the data showing, and we do. Again, everything's progressing just fine. So let's say we want to filter by, let's go for the name, okay? So what we can do now is that I want to get access to this request object. So let's pass this into our closure. And I'll show you how to do this uh, once we extract this out to a class as well. So in this example, we're going to say when the request has a name that we then want to then filter the query. And I'm going to use regxp just to kind of show you how easy and quick this can be. And then we'll pass in that name value that's being uh, supplied by the URL. And if everything looks fine here, so we'll switch back to the browser, refresh, and it's and everything's good. So let's say we want to filter by name, and let's go for that second record, says Chris. So you see, we, we, we already are quickly tapping in to the result set based on the query and the filters that we've applied. So now that we have this, this is where I want us to start extracting these things out to a class, their own dedicated class. So on the left, I create a folder off the app folders called filters. We're going to create a class that's called by name because this filter is to do just that, filter by name. And I'm going to copy this. And of course, we have to make some slide adjustments. So we're going to say public function. Let's see if I spell function correctly. And then we're going to call this handle because this is how we have to express this in our code. We're going to move remove that request that we took earlier. And forgive me, I have animals at home. And it is a weekend. So now the problem we're going to run into is that when we go to run this code, we're going to run into an issue with the request. But before we do that, let's bring in, why is it not, let's see here. Oh, 
I don't like that. Okay. App filters by name. Okay. So let's go back to by name. And of course, remember when we go to run this, we're going to run to an issue undefined variable request. So now the next step we're saying, well, how do we get access to that request object? Now you could easily just say, call the, requ the request helper. You could do that. Um, but I tend to have my uh, classes to where I kind of know what I'm dealing with. So I'm not having to guess what what's being played with in terms of data. So we're gonna have the constructor and we're gonna say protected. And then we want the request. And so now that we've done this, we can now access requests by calling this request. So I'll make that adjustment there and here. And if we refresh, we should have data and it's filtered by Chris. Uh, we, could, we could add another letter, say Chris D, right? And of course, the beautiful thing about regxp is that you can do single letter or if uh, single single letter queries, right? And then if there's no thing, nothing being uh, passed, it won't use the filter. That's the beautiful thing because when this process goes to that next, it's basically saying we're going to pass this on, and then we're only going to apply this should it be true. So now we sit there and say, well, what about filtering by email? Well, all we got to do now is duplicate this. And of course, as you get an idea, when you start duplicating code, you can also find ways to kind of uh, make it to where there's more of a dry approach to it. But we're going to call this one by email. We'll change the name of it. And just like we did before, all I got to do now is just change my references, right? So now that we have this, we're going to go back. And we're going to say by email. And so as you get an idea, you're going to be, you could be adding multiple, multiple filters, but instead of having that, this pipeline array just being filled with your, with your own closures, as you see, extracting it out to its own class actually makes things look cleaner. And we also know exactly what the code is doing. So now we're going to go back and let's say we want to then filter by, let's, let's go for dot org addresses. We can do that. Now we can chain these things on top of each other. Let's say I want to go for somebody has the first name of Adrian. Just like that. And then to finally bring it home, we'll just copy this one more time and we'll do one for by date of birth. And we'll call it by DOB, which is just a short way to name it. And again, using the same approach, add it here. And so now if I want to find people with a .org address that has the, the letter A in it, and now we can sit there and say, has a date of birth of, let's choose the year 2003. How about that? So obviously this, this gives you an idea just what all you can do with pipelines and how you can stack them together while also keeping your code nice, clean, readable, and most importantly, scalable. So if you've enjoyed this video, please leave me a like, a comment, uh, share this on Twitter, and I'll also post this on my YouTube channel, which you can find me under the handle DaltonCast. See you next time.